also back on the court tonight against the Sacramento Kings. Griff, we know net rating is one of your favorite stats. How telling is it that the Warriors have the lowest net rating they've had over the last five years this particular season? I don't think terribly so because if you would have spotted someone at this time in the year, the injury situation they would have dealt with, the inability they had to get Draymond and Steph on the court to Together, I think you would have had to assume that it wouldn't look very good. What concerns me about it, though, is that this team doesn't have the depth it had even last year. So they're going to have to continue to get incredible production from the starters and hope that somebody steps to the fore on the bench. That team is really missing, and I think one of the reasons the net ratings suffer so much, they are really missing the vertical spacing element of Damian Jones and or JaVale McGee. Mm -hmm. And in the absence of those guys, they need to find it because it's really difficult for their offense to flow as smoothly if you don't have to honor the dive. You know salaries better than me. How much did the Lakers pay JaVale McGee? It's a great question. I don't know the answer. No, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a high salary, It was right? not a lot. Sometimes you never miss a good thing until it's gone. I think JaVale McGee was taken uh, for granted to a certain degree. Uh, he obviously has shown that if given more opportunity, he can play out. He can stay out there on the court. They never really believed in him, and now they truly miss him. I know Damian, da Damian Jones played that role for a while, but when you have an athletic role like Damian Jones, JaVel McGee, or for Houston, a Clint Capella, guys like that, when they screen and roll, they mean so much to your team offensively because they activate the weak side of the defense. Those guys roll down the lane. Weak side defenders understand, I have to meet this guy early and up in the lane or else he's going to be dunking on my head. You don't have to do the same thing with guys that aren't quite as athletic. You can rotate to them later. But when those guys have to rotate up the lane, what that does is it creates those passes to the corner. It creates guys cutting back door for lobs. It creates a lot of ball movement on the weak side. And you miss that when guys like JaVale McGee and Damian Williams are not on this team. Throwing the fact that Draymond Green, when, he, when he's struggling shooting the ball this year, it really means they're struggling at the five spot. So you're saying minimum for Jamail McGee was money well spent? That's what he makes, a million five. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Ba basically, uh, they, they, didn't, they didn't realize they had a good thing. And JaVale McGee is, he, I'm not going to say he has a lot of haters, but JaVale McGee has been miscast. And a lot of people think that he isn't intelligent or he, can, he isn't this and he isn't that. He's been cast a certain way. I play with him. He's very intelligent. He's a hard worker. He's a good rim, he's a good rim runner. And now he's gotten great coaching and he does what he does well. And I think that Golden State messed up by not bringing him back, especially at that low of a number. Well, and they may, they may have wanted to. Maybe he wasn't willing to play in Golden for minimum, and he felt better Maybe about he, the Lakers situation. Did they have more than the minimum? I mean, may, I, hey, listen, I, I'm not saying pay the man uh, $25 million, but did you have three or <laughs> did you have $5 million for JaVale McGee? <laughs> he was well, a major part of your championship team. They and, didn't even match Patrick McCaw now yeah. because it was $11.6 million in space. I will say this, going back to JaVale, in the NBA Finals, he had some very impactful minutes on the defensive end when he would switch the screen and roll. He was sliding his feet very well with LeBron James. Well, we know that Golden State, it's defensively that they've struggled a little bit more this year as opposed to offensively. The Kings and Warriors, both in the top five in scoring and pace this season, on average combining to score over 230 points a game. Over under, we're going to see 230 tonight between these two teams. Blue Horseshoe says take the over. I'm going with Griff. I'm going over as well. I don't know who Blue Horseshoe is, <laughs> yeah. but I is think that that betting you know what you're your, talking about. Is that your bookie, Griff? <laughs> it's, a, it's a movie reference. We'll fill you in on it later. Okay, is he betting on the Bucks or the Raptors? That's the interesting question tonight as those two teams set to take the court right here on NBA TV at 8.30. Taxes and on Friday night, Smitty's under the rim on Woo! NBA TV. Oh, really, really? It's that time. Hey, it's the only reason I show up. Brendan, every week, and it's the only reason I show up. It's not a bad week. We had a bad, a good week, so I'm getting ready. You know, Torrance, my guy upstairs, mm -hmm. Matt Gaines, they put together a phenomenal Smitty's under the rim. First of all, I got to take care of my counterparts. 
Allie. We oh, have what, you what did dressed you dig up. up. What did you dig Happy up? Happy New Year. Okay. Oh, okay. Hey, Brendan. You look good. You look good. You ready? It. Yes, sir. That's Turbo. Oh, oh yeah. He's in Charlotte. He's in my hometown. In your hometown? Mm-hmm. Mm, against Rudan's Karoops. To who? Karoops. Okay. You gotta get it right. Karoochie, slide your feet, y'all. Oh, watch out. We just gonna call him Karoochie for this time. Like, get out of there, Karoochie. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a second. The wow. one thing is he could not stop. Get your numbers back in front of Kimba. That's okay. Good job of playing it off. That's a bucket. That's number five, Turbo. Number four, talk to me about DeRozan on this one. Oh, right? oh, wait, I don't even know what he did. Got to give you a different angle. Yeah, he gave like, he five, he like five different one. moves in a Euro. He don't okay, do it like that. Stop in between much. the legs, the dribble, Euro step. Wait a minute. Hold no, on, he's Toronto. been working with my guy, dribble too much. Ooh, 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 he's bing, bing. it. Oh, my mm. goodness. There's DeMar DeRozan at mm. number four. He had a point to prove that night. Mm. Yes, he did. Number three, Kawhi. First, we're going to give you this play. Settle. Okay. Under the rim, you like that? That's Ooh. nice. I mean, I, 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 I seen better, but that's you nice. Seen better under the rim. Nice reverse. We're just warm it up. This is where the next play against Gobert, the next play right now, where I said Kawhi Leonard is going to another level. Watch this quick crossover. Oh, oh, oh! Watch out, your Wait head. a second. Oh, that was vicious right there. I have not seen it that quick in a long time. Bing, bing! Oh, hard, two hard dribbles, real quick. Mm. I remember Young that play. Fella. LeBron had something to say about that. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, I said, ooh, ooh, next level handles. Number two, talk to me about this. One of the best I've seen in a long time. Is this my boy. We got a lot of laughs. This my boy from the. Yes. Yes. Wait a second, switch. Oh, switch. hold on. The fuck we push him? <laughs> well, hey, look at the end of the play, Smitty. Watch this, watch this. Pushed him out of there. Watch it. Get, Get out, out of there. there. Help me set him up. <laughs> hey, play, hey, that is not your friend. <laughs> not at all. Who's that, Beasley? Oh, that's Beasley. Hey, Beasley. Hey, Mason Plumley is not your friend, Be Beasley. Watch it. Get out, out of there. there. Moody. Hey. There's nothing over there. I got There's say, nothing over there. There you go. And number one, the barber. He's a bad man. From last night. He's a bad man. Allie. <laughs> This is getting step easy step. What the step raise his foot up? Oh, watch out, step. At Ooh. the beginning, though, step raised that foot up and didn't know what to do. Watch this. Oh, whoa! Dead Ooh. foot. He got dead foot. Mm. And he crossed him all the way into the charge circle and pulled up at the elbow. Last. There's another play. And this is Clay Thompson. Oh my God, he got Clay getting into his stance. Mm. And nothing oh. you can do when you can't get your hands up. That's when you know you're in a bad spot. I want the other one on Clay though. We got that one too. The last one. Did we have the other one on Clay? The last one for the game winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what, nothing Clay can do. This is good defense. Pull mm. up. Hey. Don't talk to him, Jay. Man, that was a four-point play, too. Draymond had a lot to say. Now, after that play. You know what? Get, James, Skirt, what real I quick. love about James, he's putting a lot of pressure on himself just by his outfits when he's walking in, and he's balling. Hey, man. The barber. Like we said, you walk in with that outfit, you better ball. You got hey, he's got some hey, wild. Hey, Daryl Morey said best offensive player of all time. Man, get off the ball. He's had some wild outfits this year, You're but he's backing them up. You're witnessing greatness, according to James Harden himself. You, we are witnessing I greatness. I know we are. We are. Yes, indeed. Well, he's been about 50, 40, 40, triple double. Mm -hmm. He's done a lot. A lot of people watching the wrong. They're watching the foul count instead of watching the point count. The hey, point he, total. He mega millions Powerball number. Greatest yes, offensive indeed. player of all time? He's getting up there. I ain't going to do that. Michael Jeffrey Jordan <laughs> did walk now, this Michael's earth. Michael's there. I, I, sometimes I just don't even. Mike's in his Mike, own Mike walked this earth. Bad, I know. You know, I, I, hey, listen, I, I respect people like that think that way, but Mike him. walked this earth, so I don't put anybody Mike, in front Mike's of Mike. in his own class. Yeah. It, today, James is getting that nod. That okay, you can say that. I'm still going to roll with Mike. Come tomorrow, this, 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 oh, today's air? Today's game. Today's air, no question. James Harden. All right, well, we don't have a lot of early games, but welcome back to game time. Here is a look at the Eastern Conference standings. We've talked Bucks, Raptors. We've talked Pacers. What about the 76ers? We haven't gotten into them much. And uh, currently fourth in the East, 16-8 and eight since the deal that brought Jimmy Butler in the blockbuster trade to Philadelphia. Things seemed like they were going okay until today when there were reports that there was some contention between Coach Brett Brown and Jimmy Butler, uh, a potentially disrespectful encounter that happened in front of the team in a film session. Uh, he's, he's not happy with the way he's being used in the offense is what the report is saying. Uh, does this surprise you? Uh, can you see where Jimmy Butler's coming from? And what was your reaction when you heard it? Guys, Steve, we'll start with you. You know, first of all, let's look at the 76ers. Uh, this is a team that's two and a half games out of first place. And I don't think they played their best ba basketball. And also you give them a little leeway because you got to give them a, a chance because of the trade. They've traded two guys for Jimmy Butler and you figure not bad to be only two and a half games out of first place. Now to hear this from Jimmy Butler coming out of camp that's him and the coaching staff. To me is you go into an organization 
No doubt about it, the first option is Joel Embiid. No doubt about it that the basketball is going to be handled by Ben Simmons, and you got a guy who's a pass first. So obviously you're the second option for his offense. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how it could be a problem where you start talking about offense when you when you contain the Jimmy Butler. You're going to have to play off Joel Embiid, and there's nothing wrong with that. You play off great players. And if you're a guy that's a spot-up shooter, it fits perfect. If you're a guy that's a slasher, fits fits perfect because he's going to get double team and he's a good passer. I think is you're not looking at the big picture. If all this is true about Jimmy Butler, you're supposed to come there and help this team winning. You have a chance to win. I'm a little disappointed in Jimmy Butler. If this is true that he's complaining about how his role is in offense, be Wood. I'm a little bit disappointed if this is true also. And then I'm also looking at it from a standpoint of Jimmy Butler is a free agent this offseason. You would think that he would be on his best behavior because in Chicago, he had problems with players and coaches. Mm -hmm. In Minnesota, he had problems with players and coaches. And now this is the third stop. Philly, problems with some players and coaches. And it can't be everybody else. At some point, we're going to shine the light on you. So you would think Jimmy Butler would be on his best behavior in a contract year trying to get max money, and he's not. And if you're other teams and you're watching from the outside, you have to be scared to give Jimmy Butler this big money. Do you give this guy $200 million? Because money just makes you more of what you already are. If he's cutting up right now on his salary right now, what do you think you're going to do? What do you think he's going to do if you give him $200 million? So um, I was a little shocked by this. I thought he would at least uh, uh, behave this season. And I'm, if this is, once again, if this is true, because mm -hmm. a lot of times things come out that aren't true, but if this yep. is true, I'm a little disappointed in Jimmy Butler. I don't think he's playing his hand the right way. Sometimes you have to bite your tongue and you have to go about uh, your business differently than you have been in the past. And that's what he needs to do. You have, just, if you have a problem with the coach, you don't have to air it out in front of everybody. You can have a meeting and say, listen, this is what I like, this is what I don't like. You can take Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons out to dinner and say, hey, guys, how are we going to do these things differently? This is what I'm thinking. There's a mature way to handle diversity. And then there's the immature way. Too many times we hear about Jimmy handling uh, adversity in an immature manner. Brendan, for me, is you, you look at it and there's a lot of players. You see great players. You say, how is it going to work? And that's just our opinion, whether it works or not. Mm -hmm. But you have a Ben Simmons who just is basically a point guard who's dishing and obviously he can score. But he's a guy who wants to facilitate. You have a J.J. Redick who's a spot-up shooter. And you have a dominant big in Joel Embiid who can do pretty much everything. It seems like it's perfect for me for you to be that guy, the second option, slashing, handling the basketball after double teams, in the break, Ben Simmons, you running with him. Whatever style they wanted to play, it looks like to me from an offensive standpoint, it fits. Now, you might not have the same type of numbers. The numbers might have to come down for our scoring, but bottom line is that you're playing with some great players, some young players that can go and get better, and you're only two and a half games out of first place in East. I'm baffled if this is a true story. Do you, I think, just, do you I think that Jimmy realizes that Joel Embiid is the best player on that team? It doesn't sound like it. He should. He it should. But I, I, do you think he realizes it? It sounds like at minimum he would settle for the two best players are him and Joel Embiid, not Joel Embiid than him. And I don't think he wants to be the guy that gets said, the kickout pass yeah, I, for the shot. He wants to be the one that gets to the room and creates, but they don't have a room in there. For me, I, you I, mentioned I JJ, but he's the only shooter. It's not about who's the two best players. Mm -hmm. I think he, what I heard from what we we're saying is obviously speculation. The offense in the role, and to me, is you're going to be the second option. Right. You're going to be the other guy at the end of games that he runs plays for, and we. Should Joe than Philly, that's the part I'm having. Who's the best player? We can debate that. The first option is Joel Embiid and the I, best player. There's no debate. And there's no debate with that one. But then <laughs> right. other than that, who's one, two, and three in his big three? It really doesn't matter because Ben Simmons is not a guy that's looking to score like that other than to facilitate the basketball. You're the second guy as far as our offensive in, the, in that offense to be able to play off Joel Embiid. Yeah, I just don't know if he's happy with that. And we've seen – he was challenging younger guys in Chicago. He was challenging his teammates. In Minnesota, he said those guys didn't want to win. Well, what's the problem here? This, th your team is winning. This is, I, they, they, you have a shot to do something special. For a long time. And, and, if you're, and like I, I said, if you're another team, you know, when you bring Jimmy Butler, and he might not be the, the guy on the team. You might bring in two max guys. How will, he, how will he mesh with your other players? How will he mesh with that next star that you bring him in with? Jimmy has to realize all eyes are on him right now. They're, everybody's looking to see what he's going to do, and he's not painting a positive picture. And then the well, one thing for me is, and obviously we got the reports, I'm waiting to hear mm -hmm. what Jimmy Butler has to say about this, this mm -hmm. last little disagreement. It can't always be everybody else. Sometimes it's got to be you. Well, as you pointed out, Brennan, he's mm -hmm. always challenged coaches. 
everywhere he's been and not, not just teammates not just being vocal to the media but challenging the coach and I think when you're a part of a new team who has a lot of questions going on right now I was just with the team they first you get the Markel Fultz news mm -hmm. that he has the thoracic outlet syndrome that that all of his shooting woes are, are actually because of an injury you lose him <clears throat> then you have Ben Simmons who he had not hit a single shot outside of 14 feet until Christmas Day when he hit that 22 footer ben that was his first shot outside of 14 he hasn't feet. hit a three-pointer since 2015 mm -hmm. it, it's really unbelievable then Joel Embiid speaking out about not wanting to be extended to the three-point line as much to create more space inside and wanting to play you and know and all that roll inside two and a half games right out of first right that's and what Jimmy like. Butler picks now Two and a half games to speak out of first. up about his role. I mean, they need time to figure this all out. It's just they're running of out of time with the with the but, halfway but point coming up. Summertime's coming as well. Yeah, summertime's coming as well. <laughs> I don't know if they're gonna figure it out. You go, hey, you are who you are. You can change who you are, but that's just the top player. Man, you was who you was before you got here. <laughs> the great well, philosopher Jay Z. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we got to the Jimmy Butler news, you guys. We have lots of other games.